welcome learners today we are going to talk about uh, the perspectives relating to multidisciplinary education and also how it is going to affect our learning space so if we wish to pursue excellence in research with global and social impact excellence in outcome based education for globally competent graduates excellence in professional services and social engagement excellence in management for sustainable organization we need to go for holistic education and also new education policy talks about the same so you can see these are the numbers which are uh, still in being pursued we are going to make a statutory changes for uh, curriculum design especially for learning outcome based framework the faculty development programs are being strengthened and we are going to put in place the assessment and accreditation of all the programs all the institutions so that the robust mechanism is put in place for uh, formative assessment for getting this credit bank uh, strengthened lifelong learning opportunity can be provided and also learning outcome based accreditation can be put in place that is what this policy aims at saying holistic development of a student on cognitive framework and also on conceptual parameters in a country that has large number of uh, learners we have to have technology and innovation unless otherwise the students holistic development is ensured by recognizing or identifying the unique capability of each student we should not have any separation between vocational and academics the general education we have to emphasize more on conceptual understanding to reach out a large number of students in the country we have to use technology extensively and post covid this is one such possibility in which we can think of scaling it up the learning environment should also be flexible because learning relearning or sometimes we can say that skilling upskilling reskilling unskilling these are required because the employability depends on different kind of uh, evolving structure which is coming up in terms of industry 4.0 and for that the critical thinking and creativity is considered to be the topmost for higher education institutions should not be limited only to the low level of competencies we should move to high level of competencies and then only we can have respect for diversity and for the local concept so there must be the concern for inclusion in curriculum pedagogy and also the policy the quality is one such important framework which uh, need to be emphasized and uh, be it institutions be it uh, your uh, pedagogy be it the learning system the learning communities everywhere entire framework should uh, look at the universalization there must not be a gap in knowledge or uh, gap in the performance in one spatio temporal frame for example in one part of the country if uh, we are lacking in quality we are uh, not doing justice to the hei and for that we have to start uh, understanding what the differences are there in different kind of educational strategies we were uh, teacher centered till date but we should go for student centered whatever a student requires we have to provide them for example uh, there are issues relating to the problem based issues the information gathering only we are collecting information and passing it on to on to the students the learners the discipline based uh, curriculum is again a kind of uh, impediment for the problem solving issues so we should have integrated approach community based what the community needs accordingly we have to provide them all those things we need to put many electives depending on the requirements of a learner the employability skills which he need to put in uh, emphasis that should be given and also systematic uh, strategies reg regarding the other forms of learning should be put in place and in that uh, sense the the descriptors for learning outcome progression is from a curriculum we should know what is the course 
learning outcome, what is the program learning outcome, how the graduate profile shall be populated based on these learning outcomes. And this framework talks about everything, the outcomes and also the supporting assessment evaluation ways by which the feedback is provided through improvements so that the mission can be achieved for the courses learning outcomes, the student outcomes, if we clearly define what is the program outcome, what is the course outcome, and they are assessed, not uh, summative assessment, but by way of uh, formative assessment, the student can improve and a student can move towards the higher level of competencies. And this is what is required for which uh, the continual quality improvement is a must. From a student side, it is not that uh, only HEIs uh, depend on the instructors. The student should also participate as an active part learner and they should come prepared for each class. So for that, the flipped classroom can be an opportunity for them so that beforehand they have gone through the video lectures or the material and then they are clearing the doubt inside the class or they are discussing the things from the perspective of high level of competencies instead of going for the road learning. So they have to contribute by teaching others. They have to actively participate. They have to take risk. They have to learn from instructors and sometimes classmates. Generally, learning takes place outside the classroom when we discuss, when we resolve some of the issues which we could not understand during the class. The ethics is also important because we have to respect, we have to trust, and we have to be open. If we don't know something, definitely we have to come out and we have to tell that this part is not known to me. And also, the learning commitment is there. Only then you can go for the continual improvement. This action learning formula, action learning is uh, having several such components. Acquiring knowledge is one part. Sometimes when we learn accidentally, so that is called experiential learning. We have done something, we have uh, noticed that by doing this, we get this kind of change. We work in a group and then we learn in that group. And then sometimes some complex problems are given for solving those problems. If you have insightful questioning, if suppose I am asking the same question which is there which has already been asked in your question papers, the student will never ever go for insightful or active learning way. So learning occurs through program knowledge, which is already there in form of your uh, curriculum. Traditional instructions are the routine questions, describe this, explain this, state and prove something. But on top of that, at least 30% uh, of the questions should come from insightful questioning which is new to the learner, new to the examinee in the classroom. So in a program outcome, I will list about A to K, ability to acquire and apply fundamental principles, capability to communicate effectively, this is the core, even if you are graduated from a good institution, you need to communicate effectively, acquisition of technical competence in specialized areas, ability to identify, formulate, and model the problems, and then find solutions, not necessarily only engineering solutions, but many other solutions are there. Ability to conduct research in chosen field, understanding of importance of sustainability and cost effectiveness, which I have already just explained why this sustainability is important, understanding and commitment to professional and ethical responsibilities, because this is I 4.0, we are going to work in a virtual space. So we have to have the ability to work effectively as an individual, as a member, as a leader in a team. And sometimes the team is a virtual team. Ability to be multi-skilled engineer or good technical knowledge, management, leadership, and entrepreneurial skills. Awareness of the social, cultural, global, environmental responsibilities as an engineer and also as a professional, capability and enthusiasm for self-improvement through continuous professional development and lifelong learning. So these are A to K, these are considered to be the pro program outcomes and we have to translate these in terms of our own curricula, our own subject. I have taken example from 
engineering uh, background, but it can be for different disciplines as well. So in case of uh, outcome-based education curricula, it is the program objective, the program outcome, the course outcome, and performance indicators need to be spelled. It is objective and outcome driven. It is not that that uh, something is uh, memorized and at the end you get a score 100 percent marks or 90 percent marks, and but you don't know how to solve the problem. So it is centered around the needs of the students and the stakeholders. So that. Uh, differentiates from the traditional way of uh, learning if I compare it with the outcome-based learning. So every learning outcome is intentional. It is not that something which has uh, accidentally come to me. So it should be intentionally designed in such a manner that learning outcome becomes the suitable perform performance indicator and for which we need to put the program objectives and program op outcomes well-defined, formulated, based on the attainments, maybe during the course of the duration, which can be from three to five years. So outcomes, they address the knowledge, skills, and attitudes that need to be attained by a student. Teaching learning method may have to be integrated to include a definite delivery method to complement the traditional lecturing method, and they are variety of ways by which the program is pre prog program prepares a student for their career and professional accomplishments they must be with the in, in consistence with the institution missions and they should involve the constituents or the stakeholders as an evidence so program outcomes which i have just listed skills knowledge and behavior attitude the outcomes are from a to k what we have uh, decided in our uh, curriculum, the multiple entry, multiple exit, that first few years after your graduation, the graduates need to perform certain actions, certain jobs, certain uh, activities, and they are equipped with all those tools, all those skills, which are required for the local needs or global needs or the from the viewpoint of the vision of institution or for different kind of stakeholders, those who are going to employ you or for whom you are going to work. So the PEOs, which are program educational objectives, they are feedback format. We collect the data from stakeholders, whether that uh, particular student has uh, fulfilled those requirements or not, whether he is employable to your institution or not, to what extent they have attained those PEOs, what kind of review, what kind of mid-correction is required so that the quality can be put in place. And this is again because of this uh, Washington Accord, this uh, accreditation agencies of the country, they are based on attributes, National Board of Accreditation, they, they look the possibility for for learning outcome based accreditation of the programs. So if you talk about uh, the different levels of uh, Bloom and the program outcomes, I have taken few examples. If uh, I go by the basic things like remember, understand, apply, analyze, evaluate. So these low level of competencies, remember, understand, and then on top of that, you can apply, you can analyze, you can evaluate, you can uh, define the program outcomes that where we are going to apply the knowledge, how we are going to solve the problem, how we are going to design or develop the solutions, and that solutions are not only limited to one particular uh, discipline, but it is lying on the interface of many disciplines. And for that, we need to involve many disciplines in the curriculum. And we are supposed to get assessed, the program as well as the course. Student surveys are done. The individual and focus group interviews takes place. Peer evaluations, self-evaluations, student profiles. Variety of ways are there by which we can assess the success of outcome-based education, for which we have formulated one national higher education quality framework for making it globally recognized 
and there are different levels which uh, demand different kind of skills. For example, level 5, level 6 to level 10, different kind of skills and their competition is required. At level 5, we may be uh, only interested in cognitive skills that are required to identify, analyze and synthesize information from range of sources. Whereas at level 10, that is PhD, the cognitive and technical skills, they are required for conceptualizing, designing and implementing research to generate original knowledge. So you can see how these uh, different skills that are required to perform and accomplish tasks vary from level 5 to level 10. And uh, if it comes to the definition of the qualification which you'll be getting at different levels, so level 5 means UG certificate which is one year duration, number of semester may be two. So that is what is prescribed and that is going to be uh, implemented as national higher education quality framework. Six is UG diploma, seven is uh, the degree which you get, bachelor's degree, honors or research, then eight, PG diploma, nine is uh, master's degree, and 10, level 10 is doctoral degree. So the conventional degree 10 plus 2 plus 3 after that we used to had uh, this BSc of 3 years, MSc of 2 years and the PhD of at least 3 years that has been uh, given uh, or split for different entry and exit for which the credit requirements are also prescribed, the type of uh, qualification and the, quali the, the credit requirements for different uh, levels is also de de described and this is entry, exit, re-entry and lateral entry kind of thing in which uh, after entering into higher education institution after level 5 you can exit, after level 6 you can also exit and there is a possibility at entry again at 5 level through different uh, uh, verticals if you are coming from a vocational education stream, if you are coming from a skills framework, you can get uh, inducted into general education and vice versa. So that is what uh, the framework prescribes you and uh, the, the, the efforts are being made to synchronize the skill quality framework with higher education quality framework, how they are going to get uh, in sync so that from one vertical to other vertical, people can move, people can acquire some skills, can get some general education uh, coursework from a university, from an institution. And uh, the importance shall also be given to vocationalization of education in which uh, the practice-based curriculum, the mapping of local opportunities, courses to be offered through open distance mode, and uh, exposure to all the vocational education can also be given to different learners. Lok Vidya, many of the things are there in, as a treasure in our uh, cultural system, which we do not know how to use that uh, Lok Vidya, that will also be made accessible to the students. The skill framework, which I have just given a framework by which we can have a lateral induction from one uh, set of uh, education system from a skill framework to vocational to general education, that is also a possibility. And vocational craft, that is internship opportunity for any student who is in grade six to eight, they can go for uh, different kind of vocations, be it uh, carpenter, gardener, potters, artists. The idea behind this kind of integration is that we take a degree, suppose I have graduated in physics but I do not know how to change the bulb, how to make simple corrections in our electrical circuitry. So that is sometimes ridiculous and that uh, part uh, need to be addressed. If I have uh, trained somebody, have given some degree, so that uh, graduate should justify, should be capable of having all those uh, skills which are needed to, uh, to, to resolve a problem which are there beforehand. So this is a schematic in which you can see, which is in the form of regulations, regulation issued by UGC. And uh, you can see the three verticals which are there, the skills, vocational, and general education. So we have given importance to prior knowledge. So recognition of prior knowledge is there some quality packs are being developed so that if you have acquired some 
vocational skill, vocational education from somewhere, or you have a skill education, you have got something, or you are knowing something from your past experience that can be counted, and you can laterally get inducted into the general education system. I have given the credit uh, details and also the hours which are required, years which are required for uh, getting those credits so that you can get at least uh, something in your hand after completing one year, two year, three year, four year, which are in terms of level five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Way out uh, come based accreditation is. Why it is required? Because uh, we have to have uh, our employable people, employable student from the perspective of global citizen. So the globalization has brought in a clear shift from education as transmission of expert knowledge to education as building learner competencies for which learning to learn and keep learning across your entire life. So again, I will repeat that learning, relearning, sometimes unlearning, and that is possible if you can skill yourself, you can upskill yourself, you can reskill yourself. So these are some of the things which need to be put in place in such a manner that entire of your lifelong learning activity, you can enjoy the learning things and also contributing to economic value in a meaningful way. Uh, to conclude, I will uh, cite one such uh, quote from uh, Honorable APJ Abdul Kalam, the President of India. He wrote in his vision to mission in 2003 that I am not interested in listening to 100 ways by which it cannot be done. Can you tell me one way in which it can be done? If I am authorized, I will remove the word impossible. So a student, after graduating, what he should learn? That he should remove the word impossible from his dictionary, and that is only possible if he has trained his mind in such a manner that he is looking for a solution, not for, a, for, an, for an excuse that I cannot solve this problem because I was not taught in my class or it was not in my curriculum. So that should not happen, and that is only possible if you have this holistic education and in which we have to swim, which we have to dive, not as a learner, but also as a teacher, as a stakeholder of higher education system, in which you have to take part in your world, and that world is education system, higher education system in the country. We have to regain the past glories, which we had in form of our seats of learning, be it Takshila, be it Nalanda, so governing our mind and feeling the power of the world of the senses, struggling to regain your self-control, we need to know what is going to be a fulfilling activity for the world. So we have to work through devotion, devotion and which pays off more greatly than work through ambition. So there is a difference. We can be ambitious, but on top of that, we need to be devoted and only a devoted person can have these attributes fulfilled. So these are some of the things which need to be put in place. Thank you very much for patient listening. Thank you.